Yo, what is up guys, Karim here, and in today's video, I thought I'd give you guys a bit of an insight into the state of crafting in patch 3.19 Calandra League after all of the big nerfs and adjustments have settled. It looks like we're not really getting any other major patches this league, so the way it is, is the way it's going to stay at least until 3.2 and even maybe longer. So let me tell you guys exactly how it all played out and the state of things now. So if you left early or you were kind of looking in and decided not to play, this is definitely the video for you and if you're trying to craft some items in the league and you're still playing this might give you a few tips let's dive into it so first of all the changes what changed in 3.19 and then we'll get into how that impacts things in the current game and how it stands all right so the harvest adjustments or reworks so to speak let's talk a little bit about those so a number of crafts were removed and some of them were reworked so the crafts that were removed were the reforge keep prefix and the reforge keep suffix two of the most powerful crafts in path of exile they were exceptionally powerful in the end game and mirror tier crafting kind of categories. Now the removal of these doesn't really impact early game or the mid game progression uh, overall. So it's mainly gonna be isolated to that part of the discussion when we get to those types of items. So those were removed though, those no longer exist. Next up, reforge more likelies. So what were these? So essentially we have a bunch of reforge modifiers here uh, on the Horty Crafty bench here. So we got reforge with a guaranteed fire modifier, coal modifier, lightning modifier, etc. Now these basically give you a guaranteed chance of getting one fire mod and that's it, nothing else. So you basically get to slam on a mod as well as a bunch of other random modifiers, which you know can be quite powerful, but you know is not exceptionally strong. In the past, these modifiers slammed on a random elemental modifier of your choice, like lightning, cold, physical, whatever life, uh, but then they also gave you a much higher chance to roll additional modifiers of that type. So it would be called Reforge, a random uh, item with a fire modifier with a higher chance to get additional fire modifiers. Now that is gone. We now only get the fire modifier, which is, which is a substantial nerf um, to all crafting across the board. You can no longer reforge stuff like clusters as easily, uh, jewels as easily, and overall it's just substantially less powerful and has really made Harvest a little bit of a redundant crafting option compared to something like fossils when doing something along like like the lines of jewel crafting which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, in addition to that, they've also made it so that these reforges can no longer work on magic items or normal items. So they're very much just a similar to a chaos orb function now, uh, which is actually a substantial nerf as well in both the early game and end game, because you're not gonna have as easy access to just getting rare items very quickly uh, in the early game, which can you know maybe be a little bit of a detriment to some players trying to get some items really quick. All right, next up, uh, we have the change to augments. Um, so if we scroll down here, you'll notice that there is a few augment options here. So add a phys physical modifier and remove another random modifier. So in the past, this was just augment a new physical modifier instead of removing a modifier in addition to that. So this is a substantially weaker and it basically obliterates it for its primary use case. This modifier in the past for harvest used to be used for fishing for good modifiers of a specific tag, like you know trying to get a new physical mod on your bow or something like that, or finishing items. Now that is no longer the case. This is pretty much now a niche option which can be used in combination with metacrafts on the bench uh, to kind of force certain outcomes, but it's no longer longer a finishing move on an item or a, a specific kind of move that you can do to try and get a, a very good outcome. Uh, that is no longer the case and it is substantially weaker. All right, next up, uh, when you're actually playing with Harvest, uh, you will get substantially less crafts. Uh, that's just a fact of the matter. In the early game, mid game, you know, even end game, you will get substantially less crafts than you used to. Uh, but having said that, you will get a larger um, kind of focus on the crafts that you actually do want. And in the very, very end game, when you're farming stuff like memories, uh, which are a new feature this league, or, you know, super juiced up Harvest, you can get a comparable amount of reforges and crafts than you used to. Uh, and they can be quite uh, kind of powerful to get a specific type. Uh, but obviously the crafts are all weakened now, uh, you know, kind of giving you a situation where, you know, even though you can't get a similar amount, they're nowhere near as powerful, so it's just not as good anymore. Um, but in the early game, you're definitely getting far, far fewer, so much so that you can sometimes even go with only getting like one or two reforges in a single harvest, when previously you used to get any between 10 to 20. Uh, so definitely a substantial nerf in the early game. And then finally, uh, a bit of an honorable mention here is that Divines did get swapped with Exalts. Uh, and now obviously you no longer have the Carvest Craft either, which allows you to divine items. That is gone as well. So all of this does come together to create a pretty massive shift in the end game power level of players. No longer do you have as easy access to crafting some of the better items in the game. And no longer do you have as much ease of access to getting early gear in the game. In addition to that, some things which used to be possible just aren't possible at 
at all anymore, realistically. Uh, and finally, I will say that acquiring good rolls on your items, uniques or rares otherwise, is substantially harder due to the change of divines. Divines right now at the time of this video are worth 200c, uh, you know, kind of like around about, about one month in, uh, which just makes it non-realistic to use these on anything but the most expensive items like a mage blood or like a 100 divine bow or something like that. It's very rare that any of like your standard traditional players are going to be using divines. Even I don't consider using divines on items, which basically deletes the divine function from the game, uh, meaning you can no longer really reroll items at any sort of point of the game, unless it's like a substantially expensive item, one which you must reroll because it just is that good. Meaning stuff like jewels, um, you know, cluster jewels, uh, items you craft early on, and all sorts of stuff like that, their rolls are permanent. And if you don't like them, you basically have to recraft the item, which, you know, for better or for worse, is just how it is. So everything is just pretty, uh, pretty grim. Uh, so to speak. Now, of course, there was one buff, one lone light in the darkness, which is actually pretty substantial. And that is that they added a abundance of fractured items to the base game. There is an Arc Nemesis modifier, which is very common from monsters, which is called Empowered Elements. And Empowered Elements drops all of its items fractured. Now, this is really strong because fractured items uh, basically guarantee that you're going to get at least one good modifier on your item. If you combine this crafting method with something like Essences, now suddenly you have two good modifiers on your item. Take it further and put a craft and modifier on, that's three. Want to put a veil modifier on there with Ashling as well, that's four good modifiers now to boot. Uh, so you can definitely see how you can manipulate this to be quite powerful. And if you do so in your favor, you can actually make some pretty good items still. Now let's get into how this changes actually impact the players at each different stage of the game and how you can expect to kind of encounter these different changes in the upcoming 3.20 league. And if you're deciding to play now, how it might impact you at the stage of the game you're in right now. Let's talk early game, League Starters. Builds that basically scrape the bottom of the barrel to be as cheap as possible, like throw everything out the window to just be functional. Now these builds are obviously really, really important to the game and lots of people, this is their only build. So making sure they're smooth and people have access to what they want is very, very important. Now, one thing we need to talk about is essences. Essences are in abundance this league. Essence is on the map device and it's been flogged as the way to make money early on in white maps, yellow maps, and the way to craft your gear this league by using Kirak on the Atlas map device and then also all the Atlas passive points, you can get some of the most powerful crafting items in the game, and that being Shrieking and Destiny Essences. And you can get them in large quantities for a ridiculously low price. They're a really good money maker, but also a really good crafting tool for everybody. Uh, pretty much everybody's build has a few pieces of Essence crafted gear in them, uh, and that is probably not going to be there in the next league. So without 3.20 having Essence, it's going to be substantially harder to craft gear in the early game, and Essences will be exceptionally expensive, I imagine, uh, for that reason. Now, why is this important? Important. Well, it's important because the amount of harvest crafts which allow you to emulate the effect of essences to some degree have also been reduced in the early game, meaning that there is going to be significantly less tools to actually get rare crafted gear early on. You're not going to be able to just slam a bunch of essences and get a really, really good outcome on a chest piece, a helmet, or anything like that. And if you need a really, really crucial item, like for example, getting mana reservation efficiency on your helmet using uh, an essence of loathing or something like that, it's going to be even more expensive. Uh, so overall, I imagine this is going to cripple the ability to craft in the future and the kind of supporting factor which was harvest which allowed a lot of these crafts to kind of go through and a lot of players to deterministically craft their early end game uh, their early um, kind of leaks out of gear is going to be uh not there anymore now this is particularly apparent when you look at the way that some of the best players play in the um the path of exile gauntlet they all exclusively pretty much use harvest to craft their gear because they could go in and get 20 chaos orb uh, or superior chaos orbs essentially to craft their gear with and that allowed them to progress exceptionally quick uh, and in the, skill, the hands of a skilled player they could really take advantage of this system and a lot of them have you know been telling us that you know this is not okay you know the the reduction in the crafts is quite substantial and it is definitely going to be pretty apparent when essence leaves the map device so i'd say overall the early game progression for league starters is probably substantially um you know hindered for more experienced players now players who didn't use harvest for this progression and just bought rares off of the, the trade website it's not going to really be a really big deal but if you are someone who exclusively used harvest to kind of craft your gear early and you were someone who specced into that and really went to town on it, it's definitely going to be pretty, pretty hard. 
Now, of course, you may still have Essence on the map device, maybe if we're lucky, and you still can spec into it on the Alice Passive Tree. And if you're a bit of a savvy player and really know your way around the game, you can use Rogue to craft some exceptionally good gear. But for the most people who use Harvest, it's definitely going to be a nerf, and that is going to impact you when you league start next league, so you're going to need a plan for that. Let's talk about mid-game, because this is where we actually see a little bit of a change. Now, mid-game gear was actually, you know, reasonably expensive to craft on a budget. Uh, you know, if you wanted, you know, like try res and a good stat on your stygian vice you know it could be a little bit expensive uh people generally look to use fossils some people used essences uh but it definitely wasn't the cheapest stuff for that period of progression like you know it was definitely a little bit more on the costly side we're talking about items worth like you know anywhere between 50 c to a divine and, you know if you wanted those you definitely were going to pay for them now let me give you guys a bit of a, a showcase of the kind of item i'm talking about here so if you take a look at my chest piece here this is what i consider a mid-game item uh, an item which you can get you know in the first week or two of the league which is going to kind of set you up and you know be a good item to farm t16s with uh you know these gloves are also a pretty good example uh, and you can see here i actually am using essences still because you know they were plentiful and they were on the map device but i imagine in the future people are going to be using the new tech of fractured items substantially more now if you guys didn't know obviously there's a lot of these available in the economy now and players now understand how to pick these up filter them and they've got the technology to put these in dump tabs meaning that you can pretty much get any fractured modifier on an item uh which is 83 or lower. You know, if it's an 86 kind of modifier, you're probably not getting that. But it's 83 or lower, it's going to be available. You're going to be able to buy it, which is really a massive thing for the mid game. Now, why do I say mid game and not early game? Well, people generally aren't picking up fractured items in the early game because the item level is so low, it can't roll some of the best modifiers. But once people start getting into T16s and farming them, you can expect an excess of fractured items to be on the market. And it'll substantially make your early, um, your mid game uh, crafting much, much easier. Because you can, as I mentioned earlier, lock in one modifier guaranteed, which can make up a little bit for the reforge nerf, which we did see too harvest so maybe you can't guarantee get a crit multi roll and another crit roll uh, from the harvest reforge but you can now get a critical strike multiplier roll on a jewel which is fractured because there's just so many of them a lot of these are really cheap like chaos damage over time uh, is like you know like it's like 3c for a fractured modifier you know then you can like reforge however you want you can use reforge life to guarantee a life modifier using harvest uh you could use fossils uh or you can use the the kind of classical technique of using a kill sword uh, but overall the mid game is going to be substantially easier due to fractured items and the reason for that is that when you combine it with like for example an essence you can grab the fractured item you can essence spam it which is guaranteeing you another mod and then you can essence spam it until you get a third mod which you're happy with and then craft on a four mod uh you know you using a craft so that's four modifiers that you want that's pretty damn powerful and it's going to get you through the t16s in a very easy way and it's going to allow you to really thrive and survive in those high tier maps as long as you grab that fraction modifier you're going to be looking pretty sweet and the nerfs will not really impact you at this stage as you're not having to use harvest an excessive amount uh, and you are not really going to have to do any crazy meta crafting or anything like that. Let's get into the end game because this is really where the problems start and this is where a lot of the currency gets burned and a lot of the frustration starts. Okay, so we'll start off with Eldritch Gear. So Eldritch Gear is actually in a pretty good spot, mainly due to the um, fractures that I was talking about earlier. Now, when you're crafting Eldritch Gear this league or any league really, you want to really isolate a modifier um, group so for example let's say these gloves here right you wanted to craft exactly these gloves what's the best way to go about it well you can see here that you probably want to pick up the fraction suppression as your base then you probably want to either use a chaos resistance essence or a accuracy essence if there is one so in this case let's just go with chaos res because i know it exists you would spam the chaos essence as much as you could until you roll the accuracy now in this scenario you could go something that can't be changed which would cost you two divines and slam it with an ashling now all you need to do at this stage is unveil the um um, the physical damage uh, converted to cold, uh, which, you know, is probably like a 50% chance to hit it. And you're pretty much guaranteed to get it every single time on the prefix because the suffix is already full and you're protecting them. Uh, and, you know, you just keep going. And if you miss, okay, uh, something that's going be changed, wipe it. Something's going be changed, try again. And you can just kind of infinitely do that. And you're not at any point going to lose the item that you already started. You have like a save point here and it's exceptionally good. And then after you get that Ashley modifier, you can craft the life. And then if you want, you can slam on another mod. Uh, and that's going to be great. Your item will be complete. Then you can go ahead and you can use the um 
the uh, the kind of the eldritch currency and you can go to town. And in addition to that, you can also do the tactic where you secure either the suffixes or the prefixes, and then you make the appropriate eldritch uh, modifier dominant, and you can go backwards and forwards and exalt slam and use an eldritch and backwards and forwards until you hit exactly the modifier you want, and then do the eldritch, uh, so the uh, the suffix or the prefix protection and the ashling method that I just described. And that can get you some really insane modifiers and some really insane items. Most of the time, you can pretty much get to five or six modifiers all perfect or the ones that you want uh, and that's obviously exceptionally powerful getting a six mod item is still perfectly doable on eldritch items specifically now that's where it ends though because now it's going to get very very hard with the changes to harvest end game items are uh, very very difficult to craft when you're looking at non-eldritch pieces Let's talk a little bit about influence gear, and then we'll move on to synthesized and normal gear. Um, so basically, influence gear and synthesized gear, they're kind of the same. They don't have all of the options open to them that um, the traditional gear does. And the first issue that we run into is that you cannot access a fractured modifier on influence gear. And in addition to that, on influence gear specifically, you can also not access essences, and in most cases, uh, fossils or harvest. And the reason for that is because you traditionally need to awaken a rob two modifiers together, and then after that awakening rob is complete, you basically can't mess with it anymore unless they're exclusively prefixes or exclu exclusively suffixes. Um, so that's kind of the problem already. You can't really use any kind of different crafting materials on influence gear. Now that's a little bit different when it comes to um, uh, synthesized items because you can use um, the fossils and the essences on those, but it's still exceptionally difficult. And I'll explain why. So the ideal scenario when you're awaken or robbing to influence uh, shape or you know elder hunter or whatever uh, together is that you really do want to have them either as both prefixes or both suffixes. If you're trying to awaken or rob a prefix and a suffix together, uh, that was never really doable after the initial harvest nerf. So you can basically forget it. You're not crafting that item very consistently, and it's basically a complete lottery uh, and one that you probably aren't winning in my experience. Uh, but if you're doing prefix and suffix together, this is where the harvest nerfs are going to become quite apparent. So if you've got two prefixes you are waking to rob them together. First of all, you're going to roll the lotto dice on what you get. Uh, and, you know, let's say that you get a full six modifier item. In this scenario, you now no longer have the option to reforge the prefix or suffix. That is completely gone. Uh, and now you have to basically gamble your item with an annulment orb. And this feels very, very bad. No one really likes to do this. And it's basically just a, a complete lottery spin. Uh, and that's going to happen quite a lot with the influence crafting and the synthesized item crafting. Uh, because you do get this scenario very, very frequently where you're forced into doing the annul. You lose that option and it does feel really bad. In addition to that, um, there's much less safe states with influence items. Uh, due to the fact that you do not have access to that fractured item, you do not have access to the Eldritch currencies allowing you to manipulate the prefixes or suffixes exclusively. Uh, so there's much less of an opportunity to kind of kind of go and you know mess with either the one or the two. And tinkering with items and hitting safe states is probably the most fun way to craft, in my opinion, in Path of Exile. It's fine that things are exceptional, uh, exceptionally expensive. It's fine that things are you know really RNG, but the difficulty, in my opinion, is when it's a gamble. It's fine that it's RNG. I just don't like when it's a gamble. Like gambling your item is basically potentially valuing it. I don't like that scenario, and that's where the game becomes very unfun, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, I digress. It's not all crafts. It's just the influence and the synthesized ones, uh, which really, really do hit uh, the hardest. Now, of course, I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, synthesized items are nowhere near as good and, uh, sorry, as bad. Uh, and, you know, obviously the influence stuff, you know, you can do stuff, but it can be quite difficult. To kind of give you guys an example of what people are now doing to hit the influence items without these options that they have had previously, is that they will actually use alteration orbs to spam alteration for an influence modifier, you know, like, for example, explode. Uh, and then they will force manipulate it to elevate it on a blue modifier. So basically they get a blue mod as a elevated modifier, which is exceptionally difficult. Uh, and then they will imprint that using a crazy chimera in the menagerie. Uh, and then they will take that imprint and they will awaken or orbit together with a, another item. And if it hits bad where you cannot, you have to use an anomaly orb essentially, they'll actually imprint the awaken or orb back, essentially wasting multiple awaken or orbs and multiple other elevated items. It's crazy what the links people are having to go to to make any good items with the normal influences. And I definitely think it's a problem that GGD needs to address. And if you're planning any build around non-eldritch items, I warn you, it's pretty rough. It's quite difficult and you may have a bad 
bad time. Uh, so that's kind of where the influence items are and where the synthesized items are is a pretty similar place, but it's a little bit easier with the synthesized stuff. You can see here I'm wearing a synthesized ring. Uh, basically, it's going to boil down to isolating suffixes or prefixes to craft first uh, and then locking those and basically taking the lottery on either reforging with harvest uh, to kind of get what you want or reforging, um, you know, with a exalted or basically slamming it to try and get what you want with blocks. Uh, and then, you know, if you, if you don't want to go down that route, you can just go with a good old fashioned Ashling um, kind of unveil uh, and then a craft. But you know, if you want a really good item like this one here, I can basically describe exactly how I did it. I got the suffixes, which was a huge lottery spin because obviously you can't get the fraction on there. Uh, and then I went with a uh, something's gonna be changed, exalt, uh, you know, didn't hit, okay, redo it again. Something's gonna be changed, exalt, okay, didn't hit, redo it again. I did that until I hit the elemental damage with attacks. And then I did another something's gonna be changed. And then I Ashling and took a 50 50 on the massive investment modifier I just rolled. Complete gamble. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where it's at. All right, so let's move on to mirror tier items finally here. Uh, they're basically just not really makeable anymore. Um, you really cannot make a perfect six modifier item on a synthesized base, which is what people really want. Uh, so, you know, for example, on like, you know, a massive bow here, uh, you know, get a synthesized bow, which is mirror tier, you know, or something crazy like that, or get, you know, like an insane minion helmet. I know one did get crafted this league, but it's exceptionally unlikely that it ever happens again. Um, it's just really exceptionally difficult. Now, maybe that's the way it should be. Uh, maybe that's why uh, GG wants it, uh, but it definitely is a massive reduction in power and the reduction in aspirational goals that a lot of players had. For a lot of players, crafting a mirror tier item was, you know, their kind of reason to play, and that is definitely much more difficult and in some cases not even possible anymore which you know, is a little bit sad. So let's wind this up. It's probably been a bit of a long video. Where are we at? So in the early game, things are gonna be a little tougher, especially without Essence on the map device. You know, you're probably gonna feel it a little bit more and getting that early resist here and getting into yellows and red maps, you know, with some good juice. It's probably not gonna be too hard though, as you know, obviously trade is a pretty good tool. And we've played without Harvest before. It's just basically gonna be going back to that. Not too much of an issue. Mid game is actually pretty, in my opinion, comfy. You know, probably a lot easier with people knowing how to do fractured item stuff now. Uh, definitely quite nice there. And also in the, end game you know if you're doing Eldritch it's actually easier than ever before with the exception of Sentinel League of course uh, to kind of get those end game items obviously influence gear a little bit tough you know, very tough in some cases, you know, exceptionally expensive, you know, don't even begin to start, you know, kind of deal without 20 or 30 divines on some of these influence items, very, very expensive. Uh, and then obviously synthesize, similar deal, very expensive. And then obviously mirror tier, we've kind of seen a change of era here. You are no longer really going to be seeing as many mirror tier items floating around, even with the concerted efforts of, you know, whole discord servers like TFT and, you know, some of the biggest crafters in the game, uh, we're still not seeing the mirror tier items produced how they used to be. And I don't expect that to see any change Changes until we see an overhaul of the crafting system, which I imagine is probably going to come in the form of all items being able to be manipulated with Eldritch currencies sometime in the future, probably in the January expansion if I had to guess. All right, so that's going to be it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and it gave you guys a bit of insight into how crafting is. If you want my personal opinion, I think that overall, I feel like the Eldritch crafting feels really fun to use. It feels doable. It feels, you know, you know, acquirable, obtainable, but I can tell you for a fact, I tried to make some items for a non Eldritch build and it was a disaster. I had simply the worst time ever. I spent 120 divines on a ring, which I couldn't hit, uh, namely because it didn't have the kind of rule in place that you needed all the suffixes to be the things that you manipulate first. Uh, and I was trying to kind of do a mixed bag and it just was a disaster, not possible for me at least. And I could not get what I wanted. So overall, I think the game is at its most fun when crafting is more accessible to more people. And I hope to see a return to that very, very soon, either through the use of recombinators or all items being able to be accessed through elder currencies. Maybe even the uh, the kind of the migration of Shaper and Elder and stuff like that modifiers to new Eldritch influences so that we can kind of take advantage of the new superior system and kind of ditch the old Awaken or Orb lottery system and really move forward and hopefully retain all those modifiers which are so powerful and so build enabling uh, moving forward. And that's the final Final thing I'll say, the harder crafting is, the harder it is to make really cool builds and the less diverse the meta becomes. So if we want more diverse builds, we really do need more access to some of the more powerful modifiers and influence gear is the number one on my list here in terms of shaper and stuff like that. Let's see a comeback in easy crafting, hopefully in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, cheers.